All right, so uh, just to intro why we're doing this, uh, basically all the veterans we get together, we talk a lot, um, and we've all come away with the general impression that we really love our experience here at Georgia Tech. And we didn't want to keep that to ourselves, we want to make sure other veterans know what's going on. And after talking with the Career Services Office, we came to the conclusion that Tech gets vets. And we want to make sure all other veterans know that. Corey O'Brien, I got my undergrad from the United States Air Force Academy, majored in business uh, with a minor in Japanese. I spent six years as an airfield operations officer. Basically, that's air traffic control and airfield management. I did three tours abroad, uh, two to Kyrgyzstan and one to Afghanistan. I'm Phil Morrow. I got my undergrad degree at the University of Notre Dame in uh, history and classics. I spent seven years on active duty as an armor officer with a deployment in there to Iraq. And before coming to get my MBA at Tech, I joined the Georgia Army National Guard as, also as an armor officer. Dan Murphy, I did six years in the reserves, the Marine Corps Reserves when I was an undergrad at Emporia State University for secondary education and got commissioned with the Army at Officer Candidate School, Armor Officer for six years, stationed in Hawaii with the 25th ID. So at Georgia Tech, we have all branches of the military represented. Uh, the Army, the Marine Corps, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Coast Guard. We have both active duty, reservists, uh, veterans, and uh, National Guardsmen. One of the things I was nervous about when trying to figure out, okay, what's the next step that I want to do after the military? I knew I didn't want to get boxed in for, for like, you know, straight operations or a manufacturing position. So one of the things I really pushed for was doing electives like, um, you know, outside of that within finance or, or other areas. And, um, you know, that, that first semester, working with Dr. Clark, he was super helpful for me to, you know, hey, just practice these repetitions, focus on this areas. He really helped, to, helped me at least spend extra time so that way um, I had a better grasp of that class and that definitely helped me with my internship at Merrill Lynch. Yeah, I think to that point, I mean, all the instructors that we've had thus far have really gone the extra mile to make sure that they go out of their way to help you with your ambitions. You know, Dr. Clark, it was no problem if, when we wanted to miss class and go to the Veterans Conference, you know, he didn't even blink at that. Uh, and then, of course, they're always available when you need that extra help because it's a smaller class size, they can dedicate those resources to you. So a lot of the classes at Tech are very case-based and I was concerned initially about, well, you know, how am I gonna be able to contribute to the class discussion having only done uh, the military as a job? But today in Professor Mitra's uh, Information Tech Management class, we talked about Procter & Gamble's uh, business spheres and executive dashboards. And it turns out that those two things are very similar to military command posts. And I found throughout the, my classroom experience that I've been able to relate a lot of what I did in the military uh, to the class discussion and really make a real contribution. With that, at Tech, you know, they bring people in from who have worked in nonprofits. There's us that came from the military. There's consultants. There's a lot of people that come together. And one of the biggest things that was a little bit different from our experience, I guess, is where you're the top guy. You have four people that work underneath you usually. Um, unless you're working time on staff, there's very little group projects in my experience with the Army. Um, and so to, to have that experience here where almost everything is group dominated, you're always doing different projects with, with different group members. For me, it was super helpful in the fact that Tech does a really good job of saying, hey, who's, who's going to contribute? Who's going to be a team player? Um, I definitely noticed that there's some type of social norm that's enforced here at, at Georgia Tech about, hey, making sure that you get along with others. Um, you know, and whether it's on in the, the group, whether it's in class, whether it's, uh, you know, doing sports, we're always, you know, clicking together. I completely agree with that. Uh, that was probably one of my other chief concerns when I was thinking about separating was, as you guys know, in the service, you have, that we don't just talk about teamwork as a cheap phrase. That means something to us, you know? So when I was thinking about getting my MBA, I wanted to be a part of an organization that equally valued that teamwork. You know, I, I was a little bit worried, especially from, again, all those movies and TV shows and stuff like that that you'd see. Is it really that cutthroat? You know, are people going to set me up and uh, hide my jacket while I'm waiting to take an interview or something like that? But it's been nothing but the opposite. You know, people are more than willing to help you out with any problems that you have, be it professional, classroom-wise, whatever it is, they're going to go that extra mile. And I've felt right at home. 
Yeah, the group projects at Georgia Tech are a lot like, uh, there are many cross-functional teams. You have folks from, from different backgrounds, different undergrad degrees, all working together. And if you've ever been on a, a staff, for example, I've spent a lot of time on battalion staff, where you have a bunch of captains from different functional areas, communications, logistics, operations, um, medical, working together toward a goal, it's kind of like that. So you have all these different functional experts, but you're all coming together collaborate, collaboratively to produce a product. And uh, it's really great. It's a really fun atmosphere. So as you guys know, we uh, have a pretty vibrant student life here at Georgia Tech. Uh, and that doesn't extend to uh, the students themselves, but also the spouses. Uh, we don't have, for example, a spouses club because, quite frankly, they're just considered like another student. Uh, we, for example, last week we had Diwali, the Hindu celebration of light. And there were just as many spouses there as there were uh, students. Uh, just to give you an example of how welcoming they are to spouses, uh, my wife and I, we just had our first child uh, just a few weeks ago, and they're already uh, setting up a baby shower for us in about another week. Last year's uh, social, Phil stole the show by eating two blocks of cheese for 20 bucks. <laughs> 50. So there's, you know, 50. So there's random acts of weirdness like that. Uh, I noticed our class and the class before us, everybody's really competitive. There's usually, there's usually the, uh, the first year versus second year full-time uh, football game, which is always a big deal. It is a big deal. Uh, whether, and they have random sports here too, volleyball, softball. Every season, there's like four different seasons. I think there's uh, at least a few sports in each season that, that someone contributes. Yes, we've, we have a social every, every Thursday night here at Georgia Tech, and that can include stuff like uh, golf, uh, bowling, a, a cross-city scavenger hunt, um, uh, cricket. We've played cricket uh, the other week. We've done um, various neighborhoods where we've, we've gone at, at Atlanta and tried to experience different neighborhoods. We've done dances. Uh, we've done eating contests. We've done, uh, we're planning a brewing, uh, beer brewing contest. Pretty much any, any social activity you can think of just to keep our, our scene vibrant and um, so inclusive. So you got the pitch from the social chair, but on philanthropy, who I'm the chair for, um, every month we try to do something along the Atlanta Beltline, which is one of the big urban projects, which is an amazing project here in Atlanta. There's also next month in December, we're gonna be going to the St. Bernard Strip in New Orleans, where our class helps rebuild homes in New mm -hmm. Orleans. Um, and as well as each semester, there's a big day of service, which we'll find a bunch of nonprofits or other organizations that people can contrib contribute time to. So one of the absolute best things about being here at Cheller is getting to live in Atlanta, specifically where our campus is located, right in Midtown Atlanta. It's got, I mean, Atlanta is, such, is like the most vibrant city in the Southeast. It's got tons of Fortune 500 companies that are headquartered here. And pretty much all of them are getting into innovation and partnering with tech specifically. So you've got companies like Home Depot, uh, AT&T, Coca-Cola, and Delta who are creating innovation labs right next to Tech's campus in Midtown. So it's a great place not only for your career, but also just to have fun and live life in a vibrant, amazing city in the Southeast. So when I was looking at various uh, top tier programs, naturally some of those were private schools. And uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a facts driven guy, so I immediately set about building my spreadsheet and just doing some basic cost analysis. And uh, simply put, the numbers just didn't add up to go to a private school. I mean, here at Georgia Tech, it's a top-ranked program, has phenomenal employment numbers, great salaries, and oh, by the way, I know because the GI Bill is predicated on the public institutions, which Georgia Tech is one, therefore, 100% of the tuition is going to be covered. So quite simply, it just didn't add up to go to a private school when I could get the exact same results and have zero debt. So one of the things I would recommend is that whatever schools you're looking at, you go and visit. When you come visit us here, here at Scheller, you'll be able to visit a class, you'll be able to hang out with uh, current MBA students, you'll also be able to sit down with someone from Career Services and talk to them one-on-one -on -one about the job hunt. So I would definitely recommend you come back out here to Scheller and any other schools that you're, you're considering applying to. So when I was thinking about getting out, I had some pretty key concerns, chief among them being uh, getting that letter of recommendation from my manager, i.e. my commanding officer. Uh, that's a huge concern in the military because if you even hint that you're thinking about getting out, you've flagged yourself and your career can clearly suffer for that. Uh, after talking with career services, they 
heard that concern and immediately changed it because they understand vets that well. Uh, so we no longer require uh, from veteran applicants a letter of recommendation from a commanding officer, but rather just a peer recommendation because they know what your service means. They don't want you to put yourself at risk just to apply. Making it even easier, they've waived the application fee, so it's virtually obstacle free to apply. Now, even in my own application process, uh, I immediately was put at ease talking to career services because I knew that they understood veterans immediately. They knew what my chief concern was, which is coming from that military family where my grandpa, my dad, my brothers, uncles, all of them had served, not knowing about the civilian world. Uh, that was the first question they addressed. What are your key concerns? Well, it's getting a job. Do my military skills translate? And immediately they, they talked me through how that will translate. Okay, those leadership skills, yes, but also the analytical skills, everything, don't worry about that job, you will get that job. Oh, by the way, I've already got my dream job. Uh, I currently have a full-time job already locked and, and ready uh, in consulting. So it, things worked out really well for me. So here at Shower, you've got uh, a highly ranked program with a incredibly high ranked student experience. You've got a great collaborative environment in a fantastic city. You've got great professors, incredibly helpful career services staff, and everything you need to set yourself up for an incredible two years and a great career afterward.